10 types of social proof that you can start using in your business today. Let's do it. So when we think about social proof, we tend to think about testimonials. That's where most people's brains go when they hear social proof. But you can actually break this idea of testimonials up into some subtypes of social proof. So I'm going to talk you through this really quickly. First up, we have client, customer. You can also include student testimonials. The idea here is that this is someone who has tried out what you have to share, and they, in return, share their honest um, reflections on it, their honest review of you and your work. This is really powerful. We see it in lots of different iterations um, in, in folks' business marketing. I want to caution you, though, that probably the instinctive way you've been trying out testimonials, um, collecting them, if you're finding that it's not working for you, there's probably a good reason for that. Here's why. It seems reasonable to just solicit a testimonial. When someone, say, um, a client has been through one of your programs, you invite them to share their response. Hey, would you would you like to share a testimonial? Can you give me some feedback? If we simply do that, we ask, you know, just for some open-ended feedback, we tend to get a couple of things happen. Either we don't get the response, we don't get any response at all, or we don't get the response that we're looking for. It's not very helpful, detailed, juicy, whatever a testimonial, whatever we need it to be. We don't tend to get that when we just come right out and ask for one. And if you put yourself in the shoes of the person giving the testimonial, maybe you've found yourself in this situation too, it's kind of overwhelming. Like, where do you start? How do you put it into words? And so I actually recommend you take a very specific approach to this. I actually wrote a whole blog post on my approach to collecting testimonials. So I will link that for you below. But essentially, the approach is to craft a really simple, straightforward survey, <clears throat> a questionnaire with really specific guidance and prompts that then the person providing the testimonial can just respond to, question and answer. And when you've done that, what it what it allows you to do is then collect that feedback and you, with the permission of the person who's provided their feedback, you use their words and rearrange it to craft a testimonial for them. And then you send it to the person providing the testimonial for their approval. And once they're good with it and they've signed off, you can go ahead and use that. And it's just a really, um, it's, it's not a common way. Uh, that folks do this, but hi, Rafi, it's not a common way that folks do this, but it is much more powerful. So I'll be sure to link that for you below. A kind of more robust version of this is to use a client or customer case study. So this is where you'll take the same basic idea of a testimonial and build it out in a much more comprehensive fashion. So sometimes you'll see video case studies or perhaps an entire blog post built out um, featuring the feedback of this client or student or customer. And one thing that I want to encourage you to think about as you're thinking through all these different types of social proof is that no one is better than all the others. In fact, I think it's helpful to think of them as kind of toppings to a sundae that you're sprinkling in and customizing to whatever it is that you're trying to promote in this particular season of your business, let's say. So it might make sense to begin with some really solid testimonials and then sprinkle in some of these other things that we're talking about. You can also think about um, the actual function that you want each, these, each of these types of social proof to serve. So if you haven't already checked it out, I highly recommend, and I'll link, I'll link it for you below when the replay goes up, um, Robert Cialdini's book, Influence, uh, The Psychology of Persuasion. In it, he devotes uh, a good amount of analysis to this concept of social proof, which if you're relatively new to the term, it's essentially the idea, it's a phenomenon, social phenomenon, in that we tend to judge certain um, opportunities, resources, behaviors as more or less correct, depending on how much we witness other people using them, doing them, enacting them. We're kind of using other people as a reference point, and this really powerful social information guides our decision-making. There's lots of different kind of levers that you can pull to play around with that. He goes into this in the book, but let's say, for example, we'll talk about kind of um, expert 
expert reviews and testimony that can kind of bump up the the power of a testimonial or an endorsement. For example, we use certain people as stronger reference points than others, depending on what kind of decision we're weighing. So we can use all of this kind of equipped with this. It's something else that you can put in your toolbox as you're deciding how you want to promote whatever it is that you have to share, whether that's a paid resource or something free. You can be thinking about these principles and using them again and again in your business. So when we think about um, case studies, this is one piece that you might decide to use once you've collected some initial testimonials. So let's say you've just offered something for the first time. I'll use my, my recent challenge that I hosted as an example. It was the first time I was offering it. And so um, it, it made sense to just collect whatever feedback folks were willing to share based on some of the testimonials that I received from people who had taken part in that challenge, I followed up with a couple who really had a lot to say and had indicated to me, oh, this was really, really helpful. I'd like to talk more about it. I followed up with them to see if they'd be willing for me to do more of a, a mini case study on what were they struggling with before? What was their experience like going through the free challenge? What kinds of changes have they implemented in their business? And what are some of the early signs? What are some of the early benefits that they've noticed in their business? That's an example of a little mini case study, and that's just for a free resource. But what I can do then is use that in conjunction with the kind of um, simpler, more brief testimonials and use them together to start to create a picture for other people. Again, the whole point is to invite other people into this resource and help equip them with the information they need to make a good decision about whether or not to opt in. Kind of a another uh, option for you if you're thinking about testimonials, but perhaps are limited by the field in which you work, um, any restrictions or governing body guidelines that maybe have parameters you have to work within as far as your ability to share testimonials. Not every type of work allows you to do that. Something you can play with is the idea of a colleague endorsement. So this is someone who is not your client um, or patient, but someone who can comment meaningfully on you and the work that you do. Note, of course, that this is, this is um, hitting a different point for the person uh, landing on your site than a client or patient testimonial would be, of course. So this isn't someone who your site visitor can identify with as a peer necessarily, but it's someone that they can look to as one of those reference points. Here's someone who is familiar with the work of this this business owner that I'm considering engaging with and working with. And it can help, again, create a picture. So one of the, the pieces of social proof, one of the goals that's so important here is to demystify, pull back the curtain and share in a real way a picture of what folks can expect. This is so, so important, especially in the health and wellness world, where there tends to be historically quite a power in, imbalance between the helper and the help seeker. And so anything that we can do to help just clear the mist and say, hey, while I don't have a crystal ball, I can't say exactly what your specific experience will be like inside my program, um, on a call with me, whatever. Here are some little spotlights that can maybe help bring some clarity as you're weighing all of the different options out there. The whole goal is to give them everything that they need to make a good informed decision about whether to work with you or not. So colleague endorsements are another really powerful way to do that. Again, when the replay goes up, I will be sure to link the blog post about using testimonials below because that includes some advice on collecting colleague endorsements um, if, that, if that's something you're considering. Next up, we have collaborations. This is a great way to show some kind of indirect social proof because think about it, it's implicit in a collaboration. Like there's a um, colleague endorsement that's implicit in a collaboration when someone says yes to collaborating with you. So this could be as simple as like an Instagram takeover or a joint live or a guest blog post. Anytime someone else is coming in to your platform, your virtual space and saying, yes, this is, this is someone that I 
um, endorse. This is someone who I believe in and I'm willing to share my time, my perspective, my content, my voice, whatever. And so this is one that absolutely everyone, you're probably already doing this already and just haven't been thinking about it as a type of social proof. One that is top of mind for many of us, along with testimonials, is social media shares. This is so important, but social media sharing is just one of those really simple types of social proof, but it is quite powerful. It's one of the, the underpinnings of why businesses are on social media at all. Yes, they're there to connect with other um, business owners and hopefully their ideal audience, but it's also to be part of this social sharing economy. So. Um, other ideas for how you can optimize for this, make it that much easier, is to not just encourage sharing of the content that you share on social media, but even off social media. So wherever you're creating content, whether that's um, a podcast or a YouTube channel, blog post, to embed social sharing buttons if they're not there already to make it just really simple for people to be helping spread the word about you and your business. And speaking of spreading the word about you and your business, if you're new here, hi, I'm Michaela Buccineri. Welcome. I'm a psychologist turned copy coach, and I help you bring more of your in-person magic to your online presence, attracting more of your dream clients with words that connect. So if that sounds good to you, I hope you will subscribe for new videos each week. So next up, we have proof of purchase. And I shared about this recently um, when I was breaking down the launch of launch of a new free challenge that I've been hosting. And I experimented during that launch with a new to me tool called proof. And what this does, you might've seen it as you're visiting other people's sites. It pops up a little window that tells you when someone else has opted in. So let's say someone lands on the landing page for my challenge and they're trying to decide whether or not to sign up. And all of a sudden they see a little window in the corner pop up that says, so-and-so from Baton Rouge just opted into the Copy Vault challenge. That's an example of social proof. It's this idea of proof of purchase. Someone else has said yes. And it's really powerful using that tool to show it in real time because that's that much more compelling. And it kind of helps drive a sense of um, genuine urgency. It helps kind of light a fire under people like, oh, there's excitement around this. I want to learn more. So that's one example. Um, you can also, a kind of lower tech example of this is to just get on social media or um, on your email list, wherever you're communicating with your audience and let them know, oh, I was just talking to a new student in my course. I just got off a call with a participant in one of my programs and just genuinely share, right? You're, you're being honest. You're making, you're referring to the fact that you are actively doing business, that people are saying yes, day in and day out to what you have to share. It's very compelling. Word of mouth referrals might feel like kind of an old school social proof example, but it is so influential. Think about it. We don't tend to share crappy resources with the people in our lives that we care about. We tend to share the things that we're really excited about. And so when someone can turn to a person that's in their circle of influence and genuinely say that they love what you have to share, that they had an outstanding experience working with you, that is that is really powerful social proof. Um, because there's this built-in vetting process, right? It's, it's similar. It's a different um, influence principle, but it is, it's similar to the idea of celebrity. It's like, again, if we're using kind of these social reference points to help decide what kind of decision we want to make with our purchasing power, we ascribe more influence to the people we already have a close relationship with. That's why word of mouth referrals can be so very powerful. Someone is basically vouching for you and saying, yeah, this person, their business, I, I'm a fan. So um, anything that you can do to encourage word of mouth referrals, you can go ahead and and come right out and ask for them. Once you've done, you're done working with a client or a student or a customer to let them know, hey, I'm, I'm really trying to build some good organic word of mouth um, marketing for my business. And so if you know of anyone who could benefit from this, and you don't have to, by the way, do this just for your paid offers. You can 
Um, let's say when you launch an email list, you can say in the bottom of your emails, no anyone who could benefit from the tips I share each week, feel free to forward this email to them, invite them to join my email list as well. So sometimes just coming right out and making the obvious ask. Um, it's so obvious, but we tend to overlook it. So don't neglect this very important type of social proof. All right, number eight is credentials and training. Now, <clears throat> I want to include this because it is a very real type of social proof, but this tends to be, I would put kind of a proceed with caution warning on this type of social proof. This tends to be the default type of social proof that we use when we first start out in our businesses. So when we emerge from our training, because so much of the focus in most, I'm generalizing, but most health and wellness professional training programs put so much emphasis on the quality of your credentials, um, the prestige maybe of your, your training, where you went to school, what kind of degree that you sought, who, who you learned from and with. Because there's so much emphasis on that, we tend to have a skewed picture of how much influence that has on the people landing on our sites. And the truth is, it's not unimportant. In fact, it can be an important influence. It's, it's by no means the only way to reach people and to help guide and inform their decision-making process. So what I want to say is, yes, I think it makes a lot of sense in, in many, many cases to include a reference to where you studied, what what you studied, any kind of specialized training you have. This can be really important to include on your site, but don't hang your entire marketing hat on it. Don't expect it to do all the heavy lifting in your marketing from a social proof perspective because it's just not going to get you there. It just doesn't, it doesn't, it's not informative enough on its own. Kind of related to this is this idea of a stamp of approval. So one way you can think about this is maybe there is an organization, a professional governing body of some type that has a certification process. If you have gone through the different hoops and you have earned this certification, by all means, include the stamp of approval, include the actual logo or whatever it is um, on your site, especially if that's going to be meaningful to some of your target audience. There's no reason to exclude it if it actually is meaningful to them. But again, we don't want to expect that to do everything for us because it's just one little type of social proof. Another example of stamp of approval is what's called um, a confidence logo. So you might see, you might have visited websites before. I have some on mine where there are logos from different media outlets, maybe where the person has been featured, or maybe it's a logo of um, a company that they have worked with, or um, an event, a conference of some type that they've been invited to um speak at or participate in. These are the idea here is that these are instantly recognizable visuals. So the logo will be meaningful on site to the person visiting your website. That is what makes them powerful. Again, that alone is not going to be enough social proof to probably guide the decision making of the person landing on your site, but it's it can be a really easy way to sprinkle in a different type of social proof. Again, think back to layering in all these different strategies. And the stamp of approval is one example of what can come from a media feature. So this is the idea of generating social proof by virtue of where you have been featured on other platforms. So this might be a TV interview or a podcast interview. Maybe you have been quoted in an online article or a magazine article. There are lots of different ways that you can be featured in the media, but um, having that stamp of approval, having that confidence logo is just one of the byproducts of being featured. Another huge byproduct, of course, in fact, the main goal is that that feature, that media outlet is helping connect you and your business to new audiences. People who aren't already in your sphere of influence are getting acquainted, are being introduced to you, and hopefully hearing something really valuable from your perspective inside that feature. Now, if you are wondering how the heck do you get these media features, you might have come across some resources online about how to 
um, reach out and pitch the media. That is a, a wonderful way to go. That is something that lots of biz businesses and lots of the clients that I work with make one of their primary marketing strategies. It is, however, it can be fairly time intensive because you're putting in the work on the front end to develop pitches and identify people who you want to reach out to, pitch them, do the follow-up, all of that. So that is a way that you can go. But another strategy for getting media features that is much less time intensive and can actually be quite easily worked in to your day-to-day -day workflow is to use a little service called Help a Reporter Out. HARO is the acronym. If you're not familiar with this, it's a wonderful service. It's absolutely free to use. You can sign up today. I'll link it below. And the idea is different news outlets, reporters who are working on pieces across all kinds of different topics are every day needing to reach expert sources to include a quote, to get some help kind of outlining it. Now, the idea here is you're not writing the piece for them. You are providing some expert commentary. You're providing some nuggets of wisdom through your lens of the work that you do that can help flesh out and really um, deepen the, the utility of the piece that they're writing. And there's tons of reporters every day that have all kinds of asks. And so one thing that you can, so the way that it works is you sign up for the service and up to three times a day, you can be receiving an email with lots of different calls for usually quite time sensitive um, requests. And you can comb through it. And once you get really skilled at quickly identifying pitches or asks that are a good fit for you and your business, you respond to them. And if you're selected, you have a chance of being featured on that media outlet. Now, as I said, anyone can use this right away, but through trial and error and using it myself um, in my therapy practice and then my copy business and now using it with a whole range of different health and wellness business owners that I work with, my own strategies for how to really make it work for me. And so I'm so excited to announce a new workshop, a live workshop that I'm hosting that is how to build social proof and gain media exposure using Help a Reporter Out. You can sign up below and it's going to be taking place very soon. I can't wait to to teach on this topic. Um, inside the workshop, we're going to meet for about an hour and you'll learn how to identify the right fit media requests to respond to. So it's not about absolutely responding yes to everything. Because as I said, there's such a high volume of these requests coming through. You really want to make sure it's a good fit for you and your business and your goals, who you want to reach. And so that can take some practice. I've got some tips to help streamline that for you. You'll also learn how to structure your email to increase the likelihood that the reporter selects you, that you get chosen to be featured in um, that piece that they're working on. We'll talk about how to squeeze every drop of value and goodness from every media feature you get so that, yes, you can include that confidence icon on your website, but it's so much more than that. I'll show you how to cultivate relationships with the reporters so that that doesn't end with your media feature, so that you can actually stay in touch with these people in your niche and be top of mind when they have maybe new features that they're wanting to work on. I'm also going to share some of my tips for just practically keeping it all organized so that this doesn't become a headache or anything like a chore to do, but actually fits in really seamlessly to your day-to-day -day workflow. But it's a wonderful resource. Help a Reporter Out has been such a fun find in my own business. And over time, I've really developed some strategies to make it just work beautifully. So I hope you'll join us. I cannot wait to have you there. If you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to drop them below. 